Hi, I'm Fame Harper. My friends at allfreecrochet.com asked me to show you how to crochet with raffia. For years, I would go to Renaissance fairs and they always had these super great raffia hats. And I always wanted one, but I was just too intimidated to try to figure out how to work with raffia. I thought it had to be wet, I didn't know where to get it. And uh, finally, I just said, you know, I'm just going to do it. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, so I'm going to share with you how to do it. This is raffia. <laughs> it looks like straw, like maybe it would grow in a wheat field or whatever. But it actually grows from a special palm tree. The first ones were in Madagascar. And uh, so you're not going to find it on a farm in Iowa. <laughs> Luckily, we have a great uh, raffia store near me called Frank's Cane and Rush, and we get a lot of our supplies there. So, uh, also, hobby centers have it, uh, the major craft stores, and sometimes it's sold as, uh, like, gift wrapping tie in the floral departments. So, I'm sure you can find some if you look. Now, raffia comes in all different shapes within the bundle, all different widths. And fortunately, it's very easy to split. You just grab it and pull, and it splits apart. So you can split it into similar sizes for your project. And um, part of the funky look of it is that it is a different size for each piece. So try to be somewhat consistent um, and use medium-sized pieces. Try to, within the same hat, be fairly consistent. And that's what it looks like. Now I've tried doing this dry and I've tried doing this wet as far as crocheting and you know it doesn't really help to wet it so it's a lot messier that way you may as well have it dry. It also takes to dye really well. So you can dye it all different colors or you can use it natural like it is here. I'm going to use a size I crochet hook for mine. Just if you're going to split it really fine use a finer hook. One thing I will say about raffia is cats like it and they'll start eating at one end and keep going until they're, they're at the end of that piece. So hide your raffia from your cats. It's not good for them and it's not good for the raffia. I'll use a nice big piece so you can see it. I'm just going to go ahead and make the famous pretzel and put a loop on my hook. All right, now in the same way you would with any kind of yarn, it's just a little harder to get a hold of. You can chain stitch with the raffia. <laughs> and go ahead and chain a row here. Doesn't that look neat? Now see where it's starting to split? I'm going to have to back up one and get a hold of it again. There we go. Now say you have a bunch of medium pieces. You've used all those and all you have is these little things. You can actually gather those up into one bundle and make it thick enough to match your other pieces. Now, as you might imagine, you get a lot of ends in raffia because you keep running out of raffia. So, here's two pieces. There we go. I've laid them side by side. And now I'm going to pull both pieces through so that when one end runs out, I'll start with the other end. There we go. Where is it? There we go. There. Now I have both ends through and gather them up. This is a little bit fussy here. And then I have a new piece to work with. That was where the join was. Sometimes I can crochet over the ends, but this is a chain row, so there's really nothing to crochet over yet. Now that's probably wide enough to make a mat or a purse or something. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and I'm going to single crochet in the, in the second chain from the hook, just like regular crochet. And it's actually easier to see the openings on this than with yarn because it's not fluffy. So there's the next one. I'm just going to single crochet a few stitches. It's not all that hard. It does take a little more hand strength to pull it through. So make sure you take breaks. Rest your hands. All right. Anyways, you can see it's starting to make that first row. Now I've come to those ends from the first join. 
And so I'm going to keep on doing single crochet, but I'm going to pull them along the previous row and just crochet right on top of them. I can get a hold of it. <laughs> the hard part is reaching over the camera. So I'm at a strange angle. Oopsie, don't split your ply. There we go. So just keep going until I get those ends covered. Eventually, when I'm all done, I'm going to have to give it a haircut. There's no getting around it. There's going to be little pieces poking out here and there, like this one. You just trim those off. Now I'm at another end here. So I'm going to grab another piece of raffia. This one needs to be split a little here. And get a good grip on it. And then the next space. <laughs> Come back here. As you can see it's a little bit fussy. <laughs> it's getting away. I'm going to pull that one through. Now, blend that with the existing ones. And I still have a little bit of the end I'm covering from the last row. That's this part down here. Don't worry about that. Just see where it's coming out. Those are the ones you want to grab. There we go. Just keep going along. Okay, here I am at the end. Chain one. And by turn, I mean turn it around and go back the way you came. This will just be cut off, this little end. So I go back into that stitch and go back the other way. Unlike wool, which dries out your hands, Raffia actually has a natural oil or wax in it that conditions your hands. So Raffia is good for things like hats, purses, mats, coasters, anything where you need a natural fiber and if you're vegan and you don't use animal products like wool, this is the perfect solution. With raffia, I don't really try to weave in the ends like I would with yarn. I try to crochet over the top of them for an inch or two. And whatever's left, I just trim it off with scissors. Like this piece here, I'm just going to cut that off with scissors. This is rather a messy project, so I recommend doing it outdoors where you can sleep up afterwards on a day that's not windy. Something like this, for example, would make a good hat band. Once you're, as you can see, it's curling. <laughs> Once your project is done, you can dunk it in a bucket of water for 15 or 20 minutes and then shape it and let it dry. To add a new piece, here's my old piece. Just going to push that out of the way for a second. Here's my new one. Pull the new one up through the next hole. Get the old one out of the way. Here we go. Pull the new one up. There. Now, pull the old one and the new end, all the ends, alongside the main piece. And now, Finish your single crochet. Now I'm going to crochet over all of these. Just lay them in the line you're going, the direction you're going. And just crochet around them. They fit into the, that little channel between the strands. See how that goes? Here's a little raffia doll I made with little wool for hair and I'm going to use this to embellish a hat. So save your scraps, you can make things out of them. And here is my finished demonstration piece, crocheting with raffia. Got to give it a try. Usually if I'm going to dye something for my project, I dye the raffia first and then I crochet it or knit it or whatever into something. Although, there's no reason I couldn't just put this whole piece into the dye bath. 
I just feel like I have a little more control if I dye it ahead of time. Then I can do stripes and whatnot. I hope that gives you some idea how to crochet with raffia and happy creating.